I said, that is God's love letter to you. I said, when you were dating and your husband sent you love letters, women like to keep them in shoeboxes, in, in cases. And they sit down and they read all the love letters that their boyfriend gave, wrote to them. Well, the Bible is the same thing. And when you are in love with Jesus, you are going to be reading the Bible. If there's no sin in your life, and if there's sin in your life, guess what? You're not going to read the Bible. Because people that are in sin don't want to read the Bible because they don't want to hear the truth. How do I know that? Because there's been people in church that tell me that. I don't want to read the Bible because if I read the Bible, then I'm responsible for what I read. I said, whether you read it or not, you're still responsible. Jesus, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Notice what he says, my people that should know my word, that should be reading my word, studying my word, examining my word, breaking up my word, because they're not doing it. Some of them are not making it to heaven. Are you making it to heaven? I hope so. That's why we're here. To help you make it to heaven. So that if you're doing something wrong, the Holy Spirit through the leaders of this church is going to be speaking to you so that you can correct yourself. So that you can be ready for the coming of Jesus. We don't do it because we think we're more spiritual or because we have a know-it-all attitude. None of those reasons. We do it because we love you. Not because we love God and we want to do His will. So, so He went to Mount Sinai so He could talk to Almighty God understand, uh, understanding so that God would give Him understanding of the Scriptures. And then He immersed Himself in the written Word. Know that. Paul at Mount Sinai for three years immersed himself in the Word of God, in Scripture. My advice to you tonight is immerse yourself in the Scripture. Turn the TV off. We spend more time watching TV than reading the Word of God. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what's going to happen to you. If you just turn off the TV and you get into the Word of God and all you do is work... Read the Word of God for three months. You know what's going to happen to you when you turn on the TV? You're going to be offended by what you see. We Christians watch many things on TV that we should not watch. And it no longer affects us. One of the things I used to teach in the other church was women love soap operas. But that's like a that's like you're a peeping tom looking in a bedroom and watching what people are doing. And people love that. And there's many things on TV that we see that we shouldn't see. But we become immune. If you just turn on the TV, uh, the preacher from Assembly of God, you don't even have a TV. Which I don't advise that because a lot of times it's like saying, well, you know what? I don't want to lust after women. So, brother, I want you to poke my eyes out. But it's not my eyes, it's my heart. That's why a, a missionary called of God can go to other places in the world where women don't wear a top. And they're not tempted because they have been delivered. And it don't matter what problem we have in our life, what sin we might be fighting or resist, trying to resist, God through His Holy Spirit and His Word will deliver you, will wash your heart, will cleanse your heart, will give you the victory over whatever sin it is. <laughs> then in Galatians 1.18, Paul says, Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem. Notice, after three years of being up in the mountain, Getting the message straight. Straight from God. Straight from Jesus. He went to Jerusalem to see Kippa. Which is Peter. That's his real name. Hebrew name. And remained within 15 days talking to him. Verse 19. 
And I saw no other of the apostles except James, the brother of Jesus. And what I write to you, see, before Elohim, I do not lie. Paul is saying, I am telling you the gospel truth. I am not lying. Verse 21, Then I went into the district of Syria and Cecilia, Cilicia. Verse 22, And I was still not known by sight to the churches of Judea, or Yehuda, which were in Messiah or Christ. Verse 23, But they were hearing only that the one who once persecuted us now brings as good news the belief which he once destroyed. Verse 24, So that they were praising Elohim in me. Following the, his day at Sinai, Paul paid a visit to Jerusalem to meet with Peter and the other apostles of the Messiah. The event is recorded in the book of Acts chapter 15. It takes place at this time. Paul, understanding the need for the gospel to be proclaimed to the Gentiles, was already superior to Peter and James and the other apostles. Because they didn't understand it. As a result of Paul's limited exposure with the other apostles for several years, the other apostles of Messiah still did not know Paul very well. But they had heard good news about him and were praising God on account of his change of allegiance. That is the end of it. Might have been a little bit boring me talking and reading this to you, but I have to do it so that you can understand what it means in the scripture when it's talking about the works and the deeds and the rituals. Okay. Are there any questions or any comments? I was going to read the verse I kept looking for where you said about people here. So it's in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. It says, The time will come when people will not listen to sound doctrine, but will follow their own desires and will collect for themselves more and more teachers who will tell them what they are teaching to hear. They will turn away from listening to the truth and give their attention to the Give their attention to what? Legends. Legends. In other words, make up stories. Fables. But the Bible says, don't believe in the fables of the Pharisees or the made up dreams of preachers today. For example, sometimes I've been to churches and the, and the preacher says, I have a vision. And one time I was in a church and the pastor put a big banner. This is our vision for this year. And he says, we're going to do it. Because God gave me that vision. Do you know what I said in my spirit? You're going to fail. I said, because God did not give you that vision. That vision came out of your own heart. Because when you read the Bible and you go to the Hebrew and you look up the word vision, the word vision means the word of God. That's what vision means. So it says, where there is no vision, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So in other words, what God is saying, where the word of God is not being proclaimed, for the word of God is not being taught. My people die in their sins. But when we teach the Bible, when we preach the Bible, then you are not going to die in your sins. Because you'll begin to hear the truth, you'll begin to cry out to God, and then God's going to meet your need, your spiritual need. And let me tell you, it is better for God to meet our spiritual need than our physical need. Because we are more in need of spiritual blessings than physical blessings. Because many times the physical blessings will drive us away from God. Brothers mentioned that before. He knows his own heart. But yet in the church today there's many, many Christians that are saying, Oh, I hope I win the lottery. Yeah. I hope I win the lottery. A uh, pastor. Please pray for my lottery ticket. And guess what? Pastors pray for the lottery tickets. Which is... A Christian shouldn't be playing the lottery. God bless you. I pray that God has blessed you tonight through the hearing of His Word. I pray that God will answer all your prayers, meet every need that you have. 
Pray that God will manifest and reveal Himself to you. Ask Him questions over and over and over when you're praying. Stop praying so much, stop talking so much, and listen for the voice of God. I love you. See you on the Sabbath. God bless you. Pray that that bless your heart, amen. I know I didn't mean uh, just wanted to go over two verses real quick. Uh, you know, why do we meet here? Why why has the Lord called us and draws us here? Um, you know, for sure we've all been to different churches, we've all visited other ministries and and we you know we see them on TV and error is rampant. Amen. Simply put Error is rampant. And error not only will lead you astray or lead you to sin, as Brother Joel has said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead you to hell. Plain and simple. You know, Paul wrote in uh, Ephesians 4.14, you know, why did our Lord give pastors, teachers, evangelists, why did He give, give them as a gift to the church? Why? Verse 14 says that we should no longer be children. Notice. We should no longer be children. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful body. That's all there is out there. It's all about men. It's all about me. It's all about the flesh. It's all about their tradition. It's all about their word. It's not about the word of God. You know, and, and, and the people are weak because they're not in the Word of God. They're not in God. They're not in Yeshua. You know, it's, they go to church to seek their own selfish ambition, their own selfish desires. You know, uh, there's many false converts. They were never born again. Amen. Because the Word has never entered their heart. They have never allowed the Lord to open, you know, the Lord to come in. So that is why God, you know, called, God called pastors and, and evangelists, teachers to equip us, to edify our, our spirit, man. You know, uh, the, the church is weak because they're edifying the flesh, the man, the flesh. They're not edifying the spirit. They're not going after God. Even, you know, even people that, I mean, they can go inside the four walls, sit right there, and you teach them truth, and they're not being edified because they have closed the door to God. So you have that also. <clears throat> now, this ministry, the leaders of this ministry feel as Paul did. I was reading 2 Corinthians 11, 3, if you want to go there with me. <clears throat> this is our heart desire right here. This is why we do what we do. That's why I, I believe the Lord called us here for this purpose right here. I know because this is the desires of our heart. This, Amen. Is, this is what our heart beats. 2 Corinthians 11, 3. Notice what Paul is saying here. He's saying, in verse 2, he said, I am jealous for you. With God he jealous you. For I have to you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear thee somehow, as a serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your mind is may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Notice verse 4. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, and that's what's going on, whom we have not preached, or if you, if you have received a different spirit, notice, a different spirit other than the spirit of God, which you have not received, or a different gospel, which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. Notice, that's what's going on. They're preaching a different Jesus, a different Yeshua. They're different. They're, they're preaching a different gospel. Gospel. You know what? You can do whatever you want. No accountability. Go ahead. Go on sin. Go do whatever you want. You know what? You're born again. Don't worry about it. You you go to heaven. No accountability for the saints. The pastors don't care about the sheep. They care about their pockets. Amen. No, I'm sorry, I'm not here for my pockets. And, and 
And there's a godly jealousy in this ministry for the people. 